Well, here we are, close the kitchen. How you doing? The Instagram angle is really bothering me. Although I do love myself unconditionally, we can switch an angle from time to time, can't we, loves? Ah, here we all are, Abby, Amy, Crystal, Gail, Janice, Jojo, Anna, Liz. Look at this gang coming on, coming in hot, coming in hot, my loves. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, Amanda's here, Oakland's here, Emily's here. So, uh, Jean is here, Janice is here. Hi, Ted. Ted, day 15, huh? So, um, first things first, hope everybody read the love letter today. And if you didn't, I'm going to tell you about it. So all is well. So today's love letter was, so I don't know, I read a lot of like blogs and blogs and all sorts of things like that. And everybody's talking about like the importance of schedule, the importance of schedule, the importance of schedule, the importance of schedule. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm like, yawn, yawn. You know, I, I see it once, I see it at, 15, you can't believe it, Ted. I can believe it, Ted. I can believe it. So I'm like reading schedule, I'll send a schedule, you send a schedule. I'm like, okay, I get it. Also, when things are repeated often to me, I sort of, it loses its luster. I was really thinking about how untethered I feel sometimes and that having rituals, and so that's not a schedule. Schedule and a ritual are very, very different ideas. I don't know about you guys, but there are times where I can so easily feel like a kite waving in the wind. I can feel so untethered. And what I've realized, and frankly, you know, this is really from my spiritual practice. And spirituality and religion could not be farther apart. Although if you are religious, good for you. Believing in something is so important and it's so big and it's so beautiful. And I found in my own recovery and in my own relationship with food that creating a pretty big spiritual life was not, um, it wasn't like a thing I wanted to do. It was a thing that I had to do because to me, spirituality is believing that it's bigger than me, whatever that means. And I would maybe have my definition be more helpful to say, that spirit that when I'm not in a spiritual space, I think that I'm in charge, and my and and my food addicted thinking is in charge, and my self hate is in charge because it's a very small circle that I roll right. And when I'm believing that there's something bigger than me, things like that, I'm able to like really expand. Like we talked about in one of the close the kitchens, I'm able to really really believe in, and see miracles in my life and see options that I can't even see otherwise. So I say this to you because I'm, because a lot of mornings, you know, I wake up and the outlet is in the self-hate, I'm alone, I need food to cope, you know, the plug is in, it's in the wrong outlet, right? Is anybody like that? Like, I wake up in the morning, like, you know how I tell you, like, you're not responsible for your first thought, you're responsible for you know your first action and also that we have to be so discerning about what we choose to believe. I am I have enough practice under my belt to remember the difference between you and me is that I'm a little bit more practiced. And so I'm I'm practiced enough to know that when I wake up I don't really take stock in anything that I'm saying, right? But what I do know, oh Brenna, you came at just the right time. But what I do know is that when I wake up in the morning and when I practice some rituals, and I, I'm, I will tell you 100% of the time, it changes my state. When I wake up in the morning, I practice rituals. It's like I take the plug, the outlet, and I put it in this different plug. So when I practice some morning rituals, I do, and like, by the way, like, you guys know me, more is more. Like, mine take like 20 or 30 minutes. That is not what I'm saying for you five, 10 minutes. I mean, you want it more. I mean, I've evolved over time, but what it's like is I wake up with my outlet, with my plug in one outlet. And by doing these morning rituals, I literally take the plug and I put it in a different outlet. I take the plug of self-hate, needing food to cope, 
feeling alone, feeling hopeless. And I wake up that way. It's not, that's just like how I'm made. Like the beauty of what we were saying last night is I have choices. And my choice in the morning, I would say 85 to 90% of the time is I take the plug out of that outlet and I put it in the other outlet. And it's a very conscious act. And the other thing I think about rituals was what I was saying last night about choice is that when I'm making a choice to even attempt to feel better in the morning by, by practicing a ritual, and I do it ritualistically, I do it almost all of the time, it's like I'm saying, I am open to today being okay. I'm open today to being good. I'm open to today being great. I'm not committing like I, oh my goodness. When I was back in my diet drama and diet trauma, I mean, I would wake up in the morning assured that it was going to be a terrible day. And I was assured that I was never going to be able to sustain any level of a happy life and that food was going to rule my life forever. And that was just like how the deal was, right? And so life has changed so significantly. And I think a lot of it is, and I tried to find that I would try... I wanted to put this quote in the love letter and I actually don't remember it now, but Tony Robbins has this really good quote on consistency because I think that's the other piece of rituals is practicing them with some consistency is really, really important. Uh, otherwise, they're just kind of like one-offs and these aren't actually, if anybody who's read the skill, rituals I would file under long-lasting skills, not under emergency skills. Although, I guess maybe they could, maybe they could be both. And so Sam is asking um, what my rituals are. Sam, how are you not signed up for the love letter? They were all in the love letter. So yeah, so the first, so my rituals are that I, you know, I meditate almost nearly every morning and I, I do content, I do prayer every morning. There's a lot of research on prayer. I don't do prayer in any religious way. So whatever, I, um, I just pray to whatever, something bigger. And I, you know, ask for it. I asked for it to remind me that I'm loved and I asked for it to sort of guide my thinking in the best direction. I have lots and lots and lots of prayers. One of my favorite authors in this vein is a woman named Tosha Silver. She's incredible. Uh, and so if you want, she has really good prayers and really kind of like a, a lot of prayers that I've read in my own spiritual community are very masculine and these are very feminine and, and really, really fabulous. But I have friends who are pretty religious about waking up and doing some kind of exercise. I have friends who wake up and they're committed to doing journaling. I do journaling sometimes in the morning also. Um, you know, I have friends who do readings and I have a lot of, there are a lot of really amazing readings you can do in the morning. It's just about making this conscious choice to center yourself. And what I was saying about Tosha Silver, I'll tell you about it, Amy. Um, it's really, a, it's, the, the, the idea of rituals is about making this conscious choice to change your day. And, you know, like for me, and especially during COVID, like I'm waking up in a different house. You know, I wake up in the morning, I'm like, where am I, right? And having these rituals, and I, and I travel a ton in pre-COVID, and having these rituals are like my grounding force, right? These are my grounding force, because I, I take them everywhere with me. They help me to connect. They help me to move the plug into a different plug. And they're pretty incredible. So that's such a great question. Crystal asked this great question um, about suggestions on rituals when she has a three-year-old who runs and is way too early. So I have a few ideas about that. I mean, first of all, Sam's saying give them an iPad, but I have a really good friend who gets, he just prays and he lets them run over him. And then eventually they were old enough and they were said, what, do, what are you doing? And he said, I'm praying. You can either do it with me or you can run over me, right? And I think the second thing would be what Tisha Han would say or Marsha Linehan would say, which would be like, can you find 90, 90 seconds? And Tisha Han, or uh, I think it's Tisha Han or Marsha, one of them talks about you know taking a small vacation when you open the door, just really mindfully open the door and just having this thought. I mean, I think there's other people that when they're brushing their teeth, they have a couple of affirmations on the wall and they just read them out loud. By the way, I also do that. Uh, you know, I'm like a little, if you haven't noticed, I'm a little extra and I do a little extra. So I have some affirmations on my, um, on my mirror or like some things to remember on my mirror. I read them out loud. Um, but you know, I want a big, beautiful life. So I do all the things, you know what I mean? I, I just do all the things and I do them imperfectly, but I do them pretty consistently. 
And I really want, um, I really want to say that. I think consistency is a big part of this game and it's not to be forgotten in this. So I want to tell you one more thing. And this is, uh, which is if you didn't read the, um, the love letter, you know, I've been doing a lot of my own thinking and, you know, I, and I have a lot, of, I have a beautiful power circle of which I hope you all get one day. And my power circle was sharing with me how, you know, incredible it was that I committed to everybody through the pandemic. And they were also saying how concerned they were about it, uh, about me just, you know, like they said, Molly, you know, even Oprah only did her shows five days a week, you know? And I said, well, bring up Oprah and my ears are open, my friend. And you know, and the other thing I, I was thinking about was how incredibly uh, capable I think you all are. Like, I think you're amazing and incredibly capable. And I think that it's time for us to do Close the Kitchen four nights a week. And that's for two reasons. The first reason is because I want I need a little break. Not from you, but I need a break where I'm not, you know, I think about what we're going to talk about beforehand. I, you know, it's a whole thing. And it's, the, it's really in the name of my self-care. But more important than that, there's going to be a day where there's no quarantine. And I think that we need to start to use our skills in between our time together and then share about how it's going, right? Because you have this big, beautiful toolbox of skills. And, you know, tomorrow night, there's not gonna, we're going to have closed the kitchen on Sundays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays until the quarantine's over. Sundays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And in between there, you are going to practice the skills that you've learned and close the kitchen. And you're going to report on them. You know? <laughs> well, Sam, there's a lot of people that were, and I think, thank you, Anna. Anna's saying that she's so glad that I'm taking care of myself, but more so that I'm letting you all begin to practice. And so it is like I am taking off your training wheels, my love. And I believe wholeheartedly that you all can start to ride this bike. And uh, I also think this, you know, I need to say this Facebook group that we have, um, of which Instagram, please come on it. You all can certainly close the kitchen together. I mean, I'm, I'm just your little beacon over here. Like you turn off my light, you turn on your lights, right? I just guide the way. So... We will not be doing Close the Kitchen tomorrow night. I can't believe it, but we will. So please mark your calendars because the thing I would hate is that we don't get to hang out. I'm obsessed with you. The other thing is, in the absence of that, I'm, I think I'm also going to be able to be much more involved in our Facebook group, which I am like completely obsessed with. And I go on there a lot in the morning and have a cup of coffee with the group. So anyway, if you're not a part of our Facebook group, please come join us. We really, really want to have you and we miss you. So... Um, Anyway, so that's my big news. And you guys, there's nothing more important than self-care. And if I'm not taking care of myself, what good am I to you? And if I'm not taking care of myself, I'm a legit fraud to you. And so I was reminded last night when I was saying, you know, when you say no to something, you say yes to yourself. And so bringing the training wheels off of the clothes, the kitchen to four nights a week, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, is going to be a really exciting thing for all of us, I think. And so my love. You can close the kitchen for two nights and then we're going, yes, thank you, Anna. We will be closing, I'll put it on the Facebook group or Amy will post it on the Facebook group. We are going to be meeting, closing the kitchen Sunday nights. That's tonight, always after the love letter. Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, and Friday nights. And I'm certainly not apologizing for this. I can promise you that. Um, this is not an apology. Uh, I don't, I'm not sorry. I am excited. I'm excited for you guys to be utilizing the skills that we learned in this. And I am so excited uh, for me to re recoup a little and see what else I can be doing um, because there's lots to do in this world. So anyway, my loves, it's time to close the kitchen. Hands on our hearts, hands on our hearts for ourselves, hands on our hearts for our close the kitchen community, our breaking up with sugar community for all those struggling with closing the kitchen, with their abusive relationship with food, and for all those suffering in the world. Who is closing the kitchen? Anyone? Thanks, Jeff. Who's closing the kitchen? Nobody's closing the kitchen? That's it? 
Yes, Brenda, first one to close the kitchen. Amazing. Lisa's closing the kitchen. Anna's closing the kitchen. Jean, welcome back. Closing the kitchen. Amy's closed the kitchen. Jojo, Josh, my love. Gail, my love. Oakland, close the kitchen. Mimi's closed the kitchen. Rosemary, day three. Amazing. Close the kitchen. Felice, Liz, Karen, incredible. Sam is close the kitchen. Crystal's close the kitchen. Roseanne, yay. Ted's doing his kitchen closing dance. Diane's to close the kitchen. Abby's close the kitchen. Zach's close the kitchen. Emily's close the kitchen. Abby, Janice, Teresa, Sandy, Jean Marie, closing in at 20. Roseanne, I love you. Guys, I'll see you Tuesday. It's not over. Tali's close. Yeah, Tali, close it. And there's no starting over. You just stopped and you just stopped in Kansas. Keep going to California. There's no starting over. There's no starting over. Kathy's closed the kitchen. Susie's closed the kitchen. Yeah, I will enjoy my evening tomorrow. I can't, I will be, I will miss you all, but I think this is a really good thing for all of us. I love you all dearly. I will see you Tuesday night. Mark your calendar. Set an alarm, 825, be on early. I love you guys so much. I'm rooting for you always. If you are not in our Facebook group, why not? Get on it. DM me if you need some advice about how to get on it. And know that I love you. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys.